But God can tell them, finish. Yes, sir. That's what they told Moses. Most, I mean, if you really read the story of Moses, you will be afraid. This is God that took somebody from Mr. Nobody. He made him to face Pharaoh. He had what I call, you can imagine how Moses was walking in Egypt. Every day he shows close to the palace of Pharaoh. He was walking like this. Because he was the do all and no all. If he says that frog should start, now frog will start. If he says this one should start, it will start. And this guy got to the Red Sea, he pointed in something, and the whole Red Sea, the big Red Sea, parted. It was everything. But in spite of that, there is still somebody you should fear. Unfortunately for Moses, for who Moses is, I don't think there is any man of God in this world that we can compare Moses to. I don't think so, no matter who you think they are. <coughs> For who Moses is, Moses got to a point that he, was, he just made that mistake in the fear of God. God told him, point the thing. But because of, because of who he is and his, you know, the boxing up in his head, and he got angry. He didn't have respect for God. He just did the thing. And as he eat it like this, God said, ah, it's like the guy in the, in the New Testament too that says, I'm going to throw down the bar. I'm going to build a new one. And then I'm going to do the... And God said, oh, foolish man that you are. He said, tonight, so this the choir of you. That's why we should fear God. It's not about all this money, all these cars, all this everything. God. We should just bow our heart every day and say, even though I'm running after money, I'm running after job, I'm running after this, but there is still somebody who is above all that that I should give respect to. And that's what it means to fear the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let's quickly see if we can go on and quickly finish uh, finish this, this I mean the study. God should be feared because of his holiness, his greatness, his mightiness, because he is a good God. And you can read that in the Bible. And also because he forgiveth our sins and our wrong. That, that, that even thrills me. Somebody that, even before you commit sin, has made up his mind to forgive you. If you really want to know it, for some of us that are married, you see how difficult it is to forgive yourself sometimes. Like, how difficult. As in, you know, you really don't want to. Why do we have a lot of divorce in the whole city today? It's because it's difficult to forgive. I told you, put that chair in that place. <laughs> you know? And the person decided to put the chair there. You came back again. You told the person, don't put that chair there again. And you go out again, the person tells you, I, uh, what, is, uh, what about this chair? I told you don't put the chair there. <laughs> and I play, I play. It gets to a point where you are like throwing the tower. But God will never do that. No matter what you do, He will still forgive. There are people that believe me, human being that I have, They've told me what they did, and it's difficult for me to forgive them. But God has forgiven them. Do you know what I'm trying to say? God, God has forgiven them. Yes. And, and, and their, their sins are washed away. Everything is, is gone. I remember a very close friend of mine that is a, I mean, very close to me, when he came to me many years ago and he said he fell into sin, I was like, really? You can never be forgiven, you know? But he was forgiven almost immediately, and today he's a pastor, he's pastor in church, he's doing well, working for God. God has forgotten. And that's why we should be afraid of him. That's why we should fear him. Somebody that, in spite of anything you do, when you read sometimes judges, and you see how people are toying with God, and you still can see God forgive them. Sometimes, every time I read judges, I'm like, are we doing comic here? <laughs> People who go into sin, 
Then you come back and shed one crocodile tears. You say, oh, 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 oh. Then God will raise up somebody to go and help them. Then after the person helps them, they will say, Shh. they will go back to sin again. Yeah. And they did not do it twice. They did not do it four times. They did not do it five times. And every time they call on God for forgiveness, He will always be there to forgive them. He will not just forgive them. He will raise somebody that will destroy all the people that have held them in captive during the time they are for Instead of him to say, that one you have suffered is your consequence. Those ones, that is your own because you went to sin. He will make sure that he cleans the states, the slates. The people that even suffer them during that time, he will deal with them. Do you understand the picture that I'm saying to your person? That he can forgive sin and forget. He is supposed to be feared. He must really have a large heart. You know what they call a large heart? Yes, sir. Somebody that can, he can take care of anything you do. Mm. And that's why we should be, we should fear him. He does several wondrous things. And he's also, in fact, this one is the greatest. He is the one that will judge us all at the end. That's why you should bow. The revelation said, I saw a great white throne. He that sat upon it. He's like, he, he was describing him. And when he came, he began to open the books. At the end of the day, everything we all do in this life is not whether my wife or my child did wrong thing or right thing, it's not for me to judge. Mm -hmm. He is the one that will be sitting at the end of the day. Everything you do in life from A to Z, he's going to be saying, this one is good, this one is not good. And he's the one that will say, you end up here, or you end up here. Yeah. No matter how you think you have done religion or you have done Christianity or you have come to church, is the one that will end up saying, this is where you belong or this is where you don't belong. That person should be feared. That's, if you have that understanding, you will have that fear in your heart. Praise the Lord. Amen. Let's quickly go to the last part. How do we show that we fear the Lord? What will you see in somebody and you will be able to say, this person is afraid of God? What will, what will, what will be like, what, how will that person behave? And you say, ah, I see that Brittany fear God. There will be some characteristics in the life of that person that will show you that the person fears the Lord. Now, the fear of the Lord is shown by number one. Serving the Lord. When you see somebody, I mean, when I was growing up, it was the reign of a particular move of what I call church, called CAC. And you see all these old, I mean, all these calling middle aged women, they will, they are like sold to God. You know what I'm trying to say? I mean, at that time, there was none of this uh, calling Pentecostal or anything. You will see them, they will sleep in church. Some of them, they will stay in church, they will serve God, they will walk to church. There was no uh, enough, you know what I mean, there is no so many cars and all those things. But you see them, they are sold to God. Why are they sold to God? Because of that fear for God. They, they, they feel that it should be served. It's not about the pastor, it's not about the, uh, you know, the, the, what they get from me. But because they have a referential fear for God, they show it in the way they serve God. It's not because of the title. It's not because of the label. But because they have fear for God. And the same thing happened today. I remember when I was, in, when I was growing up as a Christian, I mean, I, I, I mean, when I gave my life to Jesus, you see so many youths, you know, people in between age of maybe 13 and 18, and in hundreds of them serving God. And you're like, why are these guys not being social like others? Because they've come to understand that there is more in God. So when you have the fear of God, the first thing that is, the way you show it is that anywhere you have opportunity to serve God, whether in the church or anywhere, you want to do it freely. Because you feel like this is the minimum I can give him. Yes. You just want to take advantage of it that ah, this God 
that is big, that is holy. I have the privilege to serve him. You want to put all your best into it. Praise the Lord. Then the second one says, you praise and you bless him always. You see, your attitude to praise, believe me, is actually a proof of how you fear God. And please don't get me wrong, but when you really see people that have, that have the fear of God in them, it changes how to praise God. Have you seen people that rolled on the floor before? Because it's their mentality. You can say, what's happening to her? She's rolling on the floor. You know what I'm trying? Have you seen people that lay down before when they are worshiping God? It's not that they want to impress you. They, come, they came to a dropping point and they are like, what are we talking about here? God? That's the person we're praising? You know what I'm trying to say? Have you seen people that raise their hand before? They didn't just do it automatically. But they feel that, is there something else I can use to show this guy up there that I am respecting him? You know what I'm trying to say? Have you seen people that are screaming and shouting? It's because they're just looking for a way to express that they, they feel that, that that man up there is far higher than all of us. So praising God, blessing the Lord, worshiping Him. Let's read the Bible so that I can leave that to corroborate that as we begin to run up. Psalm 22, verse 23. Ye that fear the Lord, praise Him. All ye seed of Jacob, glorify Him. He said, He that fear the Lord does what? Praise, praise Him. When you fear God, one of the first things that happened, if you read Psalm, you will see that that's what happened to David. David came to a point that he knew that ah, there is a God. And that's why he wrote all those things that he wrote in the Bible. The whole Psalm. Every day he wakes up, he's like, great are you, God. Great is the Lord. And greatly to be praised. He comes to the temple of God, he's like, I enter into your temple, I see how you're great, and I'm going to praise you because of the fear of God, because of that fear that he has for God, he expresses it by praising him. Let's read the second one, 135, verse 20. Oh, house of Levi, bless the Lord, you shall fear the Lord, bless the Lord. You that fear the Lord, bless the Lord. Trust Trusting in God is also another way. We talked about that. Trust in God is actually what leads to satisfaction. When you have something that is called a, a call it a, a, res, a resolute faith in God. You know what, what is called a resolute? It's like you, 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 you have come to a point where you know that whatsoever thing God choose for me, is the best, whether good or bad. Well, that's what is called trust. You come to a point where you you just you have you have poured everything in God, and that is an act of somebody that fear God. That was what happened to Job, and Job said, uh, "Whether he slay me or he makes me to be alive, I have come to know." That this God is what? Is God. His wife said, What is this nonsense religion that is in your head? He said, I mean, he said, I know my redeemer live it. He said, No matter what happened, I will just leave it to him. And when you see somebody that has that type of resolute trust in God, he's coming from somewhere. He's coming from the fact that that person has the fear of the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let's read the Bible with that. Psalm 115, verse 11. He that fear the Lord, trust in the Lord, he is their help. He and that fear the Lord, trust in him. The next one is that it departs from evil. I think we read that a lot, uh, and you can read that. We've read a lot about that. One of the signs of somebody that trusts God is that you will see that person departing from evil. Even though those evil may be beneficial, you know what I mean? Even though those evil may be promising, but they are like, mm -mm 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 -mm, I don't want to touch this. I'm sorry, because I know the consequence of it. There is somebody up there that is looking at me. They have that fear for God, and because of that, 
they 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 distance themselves from evil. Then about the next one is that the person walk in uprightness. You can see that also in Proverbs chapter 14, verse 2. And the last one is that not to commit sin, it's actually a proof that you have fear of God. It's not just because the church says so or the Bible says so. Not to commit sin, it's a proof that. What happened to Adam? Adam, there was no Bible. There was nothing to prove whether what he was doing was right or not. But God proved to him that you have done something wrong. That's why you are doing what? That's why you want to hide. And why did you hide? Because you are, you are afraid of me. So you committed sin, you went to hide. There is an instinct in you that makes you to hide because you committed sin. So when you have that fear of God and you know you are going to be hiding, you are going to be hiding in guilt, you distance yourself from that sin. Do you get what I'm trying to say? When you know that, oh, when I do this thing, God is going to know. What do you do? You just tell yourself, I think it's wise for me not to do it. So let's read that Bible in Exodus chapter 20, verse 20. And Moses said to the people, do not fear, for God has come to test you, and that his fear may be before you, so that you may not So that you may not do what? You may not sin. When the fear of the Lord is before us, like a signboard, like a signboard, what it does to us is that it deflects our heart from committing what is wrong. What are the benefits of fearing the Lord? God is pleased with all those that fear Him. There is that pleasure of God that goes with us. It's not, it's greater than money, it's greater than material. It's like what the Bible says that the blessing of God makes rich. It's not just the richness of dollars. It's the, you know, there is the pleasure of God. There is that the Father God likes us. The Father God wants us. That thing rests upon us whenever, whenever we, we, we fear the Lord. So let's read Psalm 147 verse 11. The Lord takes pleasure in them that fear him, in those that hope in his mercy. The Lord takes pleasure in them that fear him. You can imagine if God is pleased with me, it doesn't matter whether my boss is not pleased with me. Does it really matter? No. <laughs> you understand? If God is pleased with me, and that's what the Bible says, if God be for us, who can be against us? It said, if the will of a man pleases God, he even makes what? His enemy to be at peace with him. What matters in life is when God is pleased with you. He said, God will be pleased with you when you do one thing, when you fear the Lord. Number two, he said, whosoever fear God receive God's mercy. Mercy is a little bit... I don't, I, I don't know how to explain it. Mercy, a, there is what we call general mercy, which comes from God. God has mercy on all of us. Like when it is snow time, snow will come, rain will come, everything. But there is what we call, I call it specific mercy of God that rests upon individual of us. And that's where the Bible was talking about God saying, I will have mercy on who? I will have mercy on. You make yourself a candidate for that specific mercy when God begins to know that this person fears me. That's what David actually had. David did. What David did, he should be in hell. You know what I mean? Yes, sir. But because God sees his heart, God said, I see his heart. He is doing wrong thing, but down in his heart, he still has a reference for me. And you can prove it. When that prophet came to, to David, and finally David knew that it was his, he was the one that he was using proverb to explain about, you can imagine what he did. He was a king. The Bible says he shaved his head. He, you know, he was like, God, I did this against God. You know, he didn't, he didn't come to him before, but immediately that guy opened his eyes and he was like, this is what I have done. And you can see that residence in this act is actually the fear of the Lord. So, I mean, when you have such fear, you will not be far away from God's mercy. Even when it looks like things are wrong, it's like it's waiting for you at the door. 
because God knows that fine, you did the wrong thing, but the fear of the Lord is still rested in your heart. Do, do you get what I'm trying to say? And you receive God's mercy. Let's read Psalm 103, verse 17. Say God's mercy, according to King James, God's love, God's mercy is with those that fear Him, not just to them alone, but to their children, children. In Luke chapter 1, verse 50. And His mercy is for those who fear Him from generation to generation. His mercy is on those who fear Him from generation. Almost the same thing. From, not just on them alone, but from generation to generation. The blessing of God is also there. Psalm 122, verse 1. Sorry, Psalm 112, verse 1. I need somebody to open to 128, verse 4. Go ahead. 112. Praise the Lord. Blessed is. Blessed is the man that fears the Lord. The blessing of God rests upon you when you fear the Lord. The next one, 128, verse 4. Behold, thus shall the man be blessed who fears the Lord. Thus, it is established, thus shall the man be blessed that fear the Lord. The next one is God's pity. God has a pity on you. God is also. God is also, I don't know how to call it, he, he, we are made in the image of God. So whatever thing we can feel, God can also feel. God has pity. And you will see in the Bible there are some few people that God says, I have pity on them. Even Jesus. Jesus, even though he was, he was God, there are places that Jesus will get to and the Bible says, and he had compassion on them. The Bible says when he actually got to Lazarus' tomb, he did what? <coughs> what did he do? He wept. That's pity. He felt the pain and he wept for him. And the people say, see how much you love him. You attract God's pity when God really sees that you are somebody that has that fear. Let's read that scripture. 103 verse 13. As a father shows compassion to his children, so the Lord shows compassion to those who fear him. Is, is it clear? Is it straightforward? God shows compassion. King James actually said, God pities those mm -hmm. that fear him. His goodness. Psalm 31, verse 29, uh, or 19. How great is your goodness which you have stored up for those who fear you? How great is your goodness that you have stored up for those who fear you? A salvation. Psalm 85, verse 9. Surely his salvation is near them that fear him. Surely, certainly, God's salvation is near those that, that fear him. Let's see the next one. Healing. I like this one. Malachi. Verse 4, verse chapter 4, verse 2. Malachi, but chapter 4, verse 2. But to you who fear my name, the Son of Righteousness shall arise with healing in his wings. And you shall go out and grow fat like store-fed cows. Can you imagine that? You will be fat like, like what? Store-fed store cow. Fed cow. It talks about healing. The son of righteousness will arise with healing in his way. To those that fear the Lord. To those that fear the Lord. Then it talks about protection and deliverance. Chapter 34, Psalm, verse 7. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him, and he delivers them. He delivers them. The what? Angel of the, the Lord. The angels of the Lord are encamped around those that fear him, and God delivers them. The angels of God, and you can prove it in the Bible, most people that fear the Lord one way or the other, they always get that shield of God mm -hmm. around them. Let's read the next one too, 33, 18 to 19. Behold, the eye of the Lord is on those who fear him, and those who hope in his steadfast love, that he may deliver their souls from death and keep them alive in famine. Clear. The eyes of the Lord is always following those that fear him. So we're talking about the benefit of fearing the Lord. 
What, these are all the benefits. We've talked about healing, we've talked about salvation, blessing, goodness. We've talked about all this in pity, mercy, pleasure of God. And also, you become acceptable to God. Acts chapter 10, verse 34 to 35. Then Peter began to speak. I now realize how true it is that God does not show favoritism, but accepts man for every, from a, every nation who fear him and do what is right. So those that fear him, whether they are black or blue, whether they are Nigerian or Canadian, whether they are uh, English or they are Spanish, he's saying that what makes you a candidate of enjoying God's blessing of becoming acceptable to God is what? Is when you fear the Lord. It's not based on which nation you come from or what color you have. He's saying that once God can see that you have the fear, the fear of Him, you are going to enjoy His acceptability. So let's now talk about you. I mean, we ourselves, when we fear the Lord, what are the benefits that it does to us? Number one, it empowers us to separate from evil. When you have the fear of the Lord sink in your head or sink in your heart or down in your, in your heart, you, you find out that you have that tendency to separate yourself from evil. If you are around places where people are doing wrong things and all those things, you want to step aside because you don't want to have anything to do with it because of the fear of God in you. Let's read Proverbs chapter 16, verse 6. Go ahead. By mercy and truth, iniquity is caught, and by the fear of the Lord, men depart from evil. By the fear of the Lord, men depart what? We have a tendency to do evil. But when you see people that have the fear of the Lord, they do what? They distance themselves from evil. It brings confidence. Proverbs chapter 14, verse 26. Confidence. In the fear of the Lord, there is strong confidence, and his children... In the fear of the Lord, there is what? Strong confidence. When you fear the Lord, people would think that you are bragging. People would think that you are, you know what I'm trying to say. But you know what you're saying? You are like, my God, the one that I fear, he will take care of me. Amen. You know, you have that boldness. You have that confidence. You believe, you know that, and that's what a lot of people in the Bible actually shows. Because they fear the Lord, look at Moses. Because Moses feared God, he, he, he disdained Pharaoh. Even though Pharaoh is believed to be the, the holy Lord in that generation. It's like you going in front of Obama, who you are today, and telling Obama that if you, if you don't do this, this is going to happen. You know what I'm trying to say? Imagine going in front of Obama today. And that was what it was, it was in the days of Moses. He has that strong confidence because he feared the Lord. Then the next one is that it brings long life. Proverbs chapter 10, verse 27. The fear of the Lord adds length to life, but the years of the wicked are cut short. When you fear the Lord, you can actually live long. It adds length to life. But the wicked, those that don't fear the Lord, will die early. That's what it says. Answer to prayers. Psalm 145, verse 19. He fulfills the desires of those who fear him. He hears their cry and saves them. He said he fulfills the desire of those that fear him. He hears their cry and he answers it. Let's read Malachi chapter 3, verse, or let's go on. Access to God's secret and God's covenant. Psalm 25, verse 14. The Lord confides in those who fear him. He makes his covenant known to them. The Lord confide. King James actually said, the secret of the Lord is with them that fear the Lord. The Lord confides in those that fear the Lord. So, summary, what have we learned today? We've learned that as believers or as people that are created by God, God expects us not to be afraid of anything in life, to have that boldness to face anything in life, but it's also an expectation that we will fear one thing, and that is what? That is God. He expects that 
we will fear him and we will have that referential trust and hatred for evil that shows to him that we are afraid of him. We use the Bible to establish the fact that God, uh, to establish what's the meaning of, of fearing God. And we are able to explain one or two characteristics of when, when you fear God, uh, what the fear of God has. Uh, the fear of God is pure, the fear of God is, is to hate evil, is to have satisfaction. Then we talk about why should we fear God, we explain what, what is in God that, we, that makes us to fear Him, His holiness, His greatness and all those things. And when we, we talk about when somebody fears God, how will you see it? What will be those things that the person will do that will help you to know that this person has the fear of God resident in him? And lastly, we'll talk about what are the benefits of fearing God? What are the rewards that come into your life when you fear God? In conclusion, and I quoted this picture before, it said in Luke chapter 12, verse 5, but I warn you, whom to fear? Fear him who, after he has killed, also has the authority to cast into hell. Yes, I tell you, fear him. Praise the Lord. Amen. I also put there some of the scriptures that you can read that also will corroborate, I mean, some of the chapters of the scriptures that talks about having the fear of the Lord. It requires from us as we grow up, particularly those that are still young and some of us that are in our middle age, to, to quickly pick up, like Ecclesiastes like said it, quickly pick up the fear of God because it will keep you from a lot of disaster. It will keep you from a lot of, I mean, a lot of challenges because all these blessings of God will follow after you. Let's bow down our heads. And I want us to pray one prayer and say, Lord, help me to fear you. There was a place that we read that that type of prayer was read in the Bible, was prayed in the Bible. The psalmist prayed it. He said, put your fear in me, O God. Help me to come to a point where I, I fear nothing but God. And that the fear of the Lord in my heart would be the one that would propel me to do anything that I do in life. I want us to pray that God rest put in me your fear. The grace, Lord, to be able to, to, to be established in the fear of God in spite of whatsoever things that I'm going, going through. Let me be satisfied with your fear. Let me, be, let me live in the fear of the Lord all the days of my life. Thank you, Father. Blessed be your name, O God. In Jesus' name we pray. Everlasting Father, we want to thank you for your word that you have taught us this morning. We thank you, Lord, because you are teaching us this, not, not, not just to scare us, but the Bible says that we should be thoroughly furnishing the word of God so that it, 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 it will, be, will be a workman that is not ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Father, we pray, O God, as you have added another precept upon our life this morning, that we have learned about the fear of the Lord, help us to add it to our faith and help us to profit with it in the name of the Lord Jesus. Is there anyone here, oh God, that has not cultivated or that has not really added to their life the fear of the Lord, that do things circumspectly, that do things that they like from time to time? Lord, we pray that from this day, you give them that attitude, that grace, that ability, to be able, O oh God, to place the fear of God in front of them in Jesus' name. Help all of us that in the face of challenges of life, we will choose to fear the Lord rather than have respect for what man will do for us in Jesus' name. Blessed be your name, O oh God. We commit today's service into your hand. Father, be glorified. Let your name be praised. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 God bless you. Thank you.